Brother, how are we? <laughs> I'm Mort, how are you, man? What's, What's the story? crack? How are you getting on? Uh, all right. Uh, What's sure, happening? Um, just, just like everybody else, sure, you're at nothing really, aren't you? You just packed up. Well, not that I'm not. I'm, I'm very busy, like, but I'm just in the apartment all the time. Um, you're doing the shows yeah. in the apartment, are you? Yeah, literally all behind me here is like all the green screen and all, and mm. like lights, the cameras down here. So it's kind of like non-stop. It's like it's obviously when we came over, we thought we were going to get the show in the studio and all that kind of stuff. It was all ready to go, and uh, it just ended up whatever you know. It was we ended up here, and it's it was either that or go home and not do it. So I was like, you know what? I I've, I've been shooting stuff for the last three years on my own, and yeah, do that like. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Just it, it was a lot more, a lot more detail to it now. In fairness, like you're doing all the like the, I suppose angles, and you're thinking about the focus, how focused it is, and a lot of that stuff I wouldn't really care about. I'd be just like, ah, that's good enough. I'll throw it out there, you know? Because people, it's just the content. But when you're doing a show, then the boys are like, no, it has to be this way. Your head has to be just a little bit more to this way, or down yeah. here, down there. And so you're just like, but um, that's where, good. It's great. It's great experience. Where are you based? In New York, or where are you? Uh, Orlando, Florida. What part? Um, Orlando, which is uh, Winter Park, it's called. It's kind of be about twenty minutes from the airport. But you are I don't, Jupiter. I am about I'm about two and a half hours from Jupiter. I was supposed to go down to Jupiter. Uh, I was supposed to go down to Jupiter to meet Lowry to play a game of golf with Lowry and stuff. Earth, just yeah, before, yeah, just before it all kicked off, and Lowry was a bit like. Have you been in touch with anyone sort of thing? I was like, you know what, we let it off. <laughs> yeah, he's a man. So you, you must be enjoying the wave, man, the whole, but look, at I, this is the first, I suppose, chat that I've done, man, that I, I have, I'm not, I haven't raw questions or any of that crack because you're, you're one of them dudes that we, I think when we met in, in juries that time, man, it's just, you just chat away and that's, that's, that's the nature of this whole thing, you know what I mean, for the crack and stuff, but you must be enjoying the whole, the ride, man, it's, 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 it's terrific, like. Um, and it is, yeah, like you, it's 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 unreal. Sometimes you would be kind of saying to yourself, you, you know, again, you're so busy. Sometimes you don't really sit down and enjoy it. Now, and I think even like footballers would say the same thing about playing a big games and stuff. Mm. You're worried about everything all the time and getting everything right. And you look back and go, just they were the days, like, and you don't really sit. I don't know, smell the roses when you're in the middle of it. And the way yeah. that I'd be just like that, I'd be just like, just the next show has to be good. And you know, if something goes out and it's not great, then it's annoying me. And it's, you're always kind of like, if you're not like that anyway, I think you won't last too long. And it's like, you have to, I thought, I loved, Roy Keane said something one day, he says, always doubt yourself. And I remember when he said it years ago, I was thinking, no, nah, that's, that's bull. Like, you, you have to be real positive. You have to be, oh, and then I was thinking after, I was like, no, he's right. Like, you have to doubt yourself in order to keep getting better at something. Yeah. You know, if you think if you think you're classy, you think you're a man, like that's where you get burnt, where you just get a bit complacent. I spent a lot. Was, of... <laughs> I was gonna say I wasn't a dig at you now. <laughs> is um is how how are you gauging the next show, Connor, in relation to obviously the first show is deadly, man. I thought you thought. Was, it's... Uh, I I the first, the second show is better. Were you nervous uh, in the first one? Do you know what? Not really, because I did it at my own pace. You know, now I had a lot of lads on Zoom. You know, producers and showrunners and all these lads run two laptops here or whatever, so you have the Zoom going. Mm. And uh, Katrina, Connor, doing Impression Tiger. The conditions are really tough out there. There it is. That's <laughs> um, a nasty question. I said, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I was doing that, I wasn't as nervous. As one fellow was saying to me, you know, obviously coming over here, doing the impressions is one thing and going on and doing this sort of stuff. But being yourself is another thing. And it's mm -hmm. something that I have to kind of get better at and stuff. And it's, it's I suppose, another strength to your bow. So it would have been tough going into a studio straight away. When I first got here, I was supposed to be here a week and we were doing the first show. When mm -hmm. I think back on it, like, now, madness. Like, never would have, <clears throat> never would have came off well, like, because I would have been so unprepared for it. So mm -hmm. this kind of allows me to dip my uh, toe in it, like, and become That's myself different. and find a way, you know. And then mm -hmm. hopefully we're back in the studio with the way things are looking down here. I'd say the first, there's supposed to be 20 episodes. Um, I'd say the first half of them won't be in the studio. And I was supposed to have a live audience as well. We're going to have 25, 30 people there. And there won't, definitely won't be an audience this year. Which, the monologue is a bit, like, do you know when you listen to these boys do the monologues, mm -hmm. like, you have a crowd there kind of feeding off it. Or if I do impression, they'd be kind of laughing. And you kind of buzz off that and your energy gets going. 
without that, that is a strange one. Like you know, having you need no that to, to to perform. Like and like how like the, the one question I have: how, how did this all come about, man? With this, did you have it? When did you start letting know and you know voices and copying people and blah blah blah? <laughs> did it did it when I was a kid. Did it when I was a kid. Um. I was always I was I was always going around doing it as a kid. My father got a pre match the live at the Olympia thing, and I and he was watching this. And I remember Barry Murphy and it was doing Frank Stapleton. I didn't even know who Frank Stapleton was, but I thought Frank Murphy was hilarious. And then your mom was coming out, Gar Crook doing Dunphy, and uh, Richard Cooper doing Mick McCarthy. And then mm. I was walking around the house then trying to impress everyone in the house, like you know, all right, all right, okay, okay. No, well, they're not saying what are you doing, man? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. young, you know what I mean? Everyone was, except me. I was like, Jesus, you're brilliant. I was, he'd come home like uh, with the snack box after me. I'd be like, yeah, you know, it'd be like, it's great. It's great, baby, you know, doing dumpy and everything. Yeah. And then I stopped doing it. I got into secondary school, just stopped doing it then. I don't know, probably I thought it was maybe not cool and, or whatever. Yeah. Didn't do it then for years. And we were playing a football match. Mullingar Shamrock's my club, and we were playing against the Downs. And a row right. broke out. <laughs> a row broke out in the pitch anyway. And it didn't, uh, myself and my cousin and my uncle, my uncle, my, co- my cousin's father, my uncle, Ned, famous for his GA down in Westmead. Well, he hopped the fence. I was over the fence. Eddie was there. And the picture came out in the paper. And I had myself, Eddie, and Ned in it. And a, a load of Downs players. Now, it was all handbags. And it wasn't too, uh, it, was, it wasn't too much argy-bargy. But mm. we all thought this picture was hilarious. So he ended up then, I did a video on it to the lads there, and I was doing like uh, Jose and I was like, uh, I think these guys are a disgrace. I think, you know, we have to, I was doing this, and I was, uh, what else? Yeah, I was doing Dunphy. Now, you can forget about those moors, or Broly, you can forget about those moors as far as our men and all this kind of stuff. And uh, the boys were like, just, that's brilliant. Put that online. Do you know Dennis Caroon from Westmead? Yeah, uh, yeah. West he was like, get online. A lot of lads were like, get it online. And I was like, nah, nah, nah. I was like, sure, it's just a local issue. Like, no one cares about it. Tim O'Leary, Connor and a high chair, the baldy prick. <laughs> That's, you know who that is? That's the O'Leary. I do. I know, I know Tim O'Leary. O'Leary. As, <laughs> as Trump would say, I know, I know Tim better than anybody. I know him so well. I know Tim. He's crazy motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh, so where was I? I did, yeah, the boys, the boys were like, get, get the thing out. And I was like, right. Yeah, so I says, right, grand. I says, um, I'll, I'll do a video. And I, I didn't even have really the, the, the Leroy G or whatever you say, the balls to put it out. I gave it to Dennis and Dennis put it up and it was me. Dancing. And uh, my audio's have to change. There isn't there. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Uh, so I was doing Wally and I was like, yeah, you know, here we are now. And it's the first round of the championship. And we've got Davey Fitz here. And I was doing all these boys and I was calling it off the ball or whatever. And the Dennis crew put it up, got about 60,000 hits. I was working a tree at the time. And I was like ringing people, you know, here, I can save you money in your phone bill. I can <laughs> blah, blah, blah. All this shit. Uh, as I always say, lying to people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they oh, where are you living? Uh, down there outside Mullingar. I'm like, oh, gee, we've 100% coverage. and just seeing it on the map here. It won't be a stitch. <laughs> Two phones, yes. <laughs> so we ended up... <clears throat> Put that out, and then as soon as that, uh, Paddy McKenna from Joe rang me up, and he was like, come up here to Joe here, do your good impressions. So when I went into the meeting, he asked me, what have you got? And I was like, well, that's it. That, that's the only video I've ever done. And he says, uh, go on, Milton. Joe Kenny is 31 today. Happy birthday, Joe. <laughs> 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 I'll be doing one now in a second. Um, I owe Joe Kenny and all them boys. I was in college with them. I was in DCU around the time you were there as well. And I used yeah. to just prank people all the time with them boys in the house. <clears throat> Put on these English accents. But uh, so anyway, long story short, Joe then said, the boys and Joe said, we don't have a job for you. And I says, right, you know what? I'm giving, I'm giving up work and I'm going to do videos for six months and see if I get a job and see if I can make money out of it. And I'm starting to get little jobs. Like, you know, you mm. get some 300 beans here, 300 beans yeah. there. I thought it was yeah. rich going around the place. And uh, then it just took off. Around October then, around four months later, the boys... Uh, Boys come on to me and it says, from Joe. And they were like, listen, we have a job for you. And I and I, I prepped myself, you know, I was ready to go, you know what, fuck yourselves. You didn't want me there six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it, instead I was like, oh, but I'll be there tomorrow. I'm here already. <laughs> yeah, I'm delighted with it, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I worked there for a year and a half. And that was great. I'm laughing at all these comments, right? I did a, I did a Insta Live with a girl, uh, Hallie, the other day, a big golf girl, right? And uh, I watched it. The only one. Yeah. Oh no, that was that was, that. That, was, that was Alex. That was Alex on the golf channel. 
But the one I did the other day with um, Halley, there was all these people coming in from America and were asking questions like, you know, what, how's your golf game? What's your handicap? And who's your favourite impression? And then every single fella then from Mullingar and Mayo was just writing in. All I could see was on the town, on the town. And then Mayo for Sam. And she goes to me, she goes, what is that? Uh, she's looking at the comments, she's like, what is Mayo for Sa Sam? Mayo for Sam. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was going to ask, man. Story. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you must be, how are them, we'll say, did you, were, you a good, were you a good golfer kind of before you got into no, being, being no. around these golfers all the time? No, I was a decent uh, club player and stuff for the club. Played a bit of inter-county when I was younger, under 14, 15 and mm. that. And uh, I was always really small, like mm. slight, everything. like. And uh, I was just, I was laughing. I was saying, when you said you called me Westmead GA legend, I was like, the last time I played for Westmead was... <laughs> I knew was, I'd get traction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> last time I played for Westmead was getting cut off the minor panel there around Easter. I remember well. Uh, uh, you're playing a lot of golf, are you? I am now, well, obviously not now, right this moment, but I have yeah. over the last two years. It's a, it's a hard old game, though, you know? It's like, and that's why when I played it when I was about 15, I remember, like, I was always handy playing any sports. Like, when you're in school, you're always one of the boys yeah. picked up the top, and I was always just able to play most things, being PE, doing everything. Then you play golf, and you're useless. Jeez, I went that man a while back there after, that's a few years ago, pricking around with a ball. Uh, generally, I'd be okay at most sports I can play, like. Yeah, but I'm without driving the ball anyway, golf ball. I could drive a grand, no problem at all. <clears throat> so people were saying, I need to get lessons and, and this, and I was like, sure, what, uh, for the other aspects of the game, you know. So, cause long story short, I got lessons on Rat Coolman, Newcastle, with one fella, and he was showing me a swing and all this kind of jazz. And this gone on for a few minutes, man. I started hitting the ball, then, and, and I couldn't hit the fucking ball. And I said to your man, I said, here, I hit the ball before I came to you, and I can't <laughs> do this, like. And then I just gave up on it, man. I, I, I play a bit, but I don't do any lessons anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can see the headlines. More to uh -huh. blame the manager. <laughs> yeah. What's new? Um, what about... Have you found any... How are the, the pro golfers, Connor? Obviously, you've hang around Tiger Woods and stuff and that. And then by sound as a pound as well, like, are any of them standing selfish or they all good with you? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, th you know, each and every one of them are sound like. Yeah. Uh, I, I find, like, in my game, like, obviously, I don't really do anything outside of sports. So it's all sports related stuff. Mm. And growing up being, like, just playing sports and stuff and playing for Shamrocks and stuff, grew up mm. in a dressing room with a bunch of lads, like, so that's the kind of humor, like, you know? Mm. Just, like, um, do you know exactly? Yeah. So when I meet people, like, I kind of find, like, they're always dead on, like, there are sports people, like, whether mm. I meet GA people or golf people or soccer people. It's all, it's all the same kind of talk, like, you know, you're just talking sport and stuff like that. But the golfers are brilliant, like, you know, and I was laughing there. I was playing in the air <coughs> there a couple of months ago, and a fella asked me a question. This American fella came up to me, and he says, um, oh, you know, and took a picture and all that. He, says, and he started asking me questions anyway. He says, so who's the biggest, you know, jerk you've met, you know, in the, in the golf? And I was like, dead say I was, I was honest with him. I was like, you know, I haven't met anybody, honestly. Yeah. I haven't met anybody. I looked down, wasn't he recording on his phone? The phone was on the video recorded. was there staring at the grass. I was looking at this fella. I was like, huh? Thank God I didn't meet Patrick Reed up until that point. Could have roasted him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at him. I mean, and it's like anything, man. You're, you're, you're in a position now, you see, where everything you say, man, is going to be fucking chastised whether you like it or you don't like it. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the thing with... And it's different when you're in Ireland and you're going for a few pints with the boys and even around Crow Park and you're getting locked up with the rest of us and it's all a bit of crack, man. But when you're out in America, man, it's... Man, uh, it's, I, I'd say it's I, unforgiving I, at times, you know? Oh, and you know what? When you're doing interviews and stuff like that, like, it, it, to a certain degree, like... And it, you have to have it like kind of scripted. You have to know what's coming or whatever, and you have to think through what you're going to say because, like, you can just say anything off the cuff. I remember I did one of my first interviews over here around the Ryder Cup time. This fella was doing an interview with me, and he asked me a bunch of questions. And he says to me at the start, he says, um, "What's the or who? What do you say? I need the players to reach out." And Paul was after writing to me literally the day before when I was over in Paris, and he was like, "Me and you have to do something together," and blah blah blah. Be a great laugh. And I said, yeah. I said, I said, Paul, they're actually. Um, wrote to me and he's looking to do something or whatever so that should be good fun you know all the, all the golfers seem to be you know, really really cool and blah 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 and at the end of the conversation he asked me he says what's the best advice you've been given like since you got into the game and I actually said what well, Broly said to me um, <laughs> Broly said to me when I met him first my first week in Joe I met Broly the boy sent me down to give him, do an interview with him and he says you know you make sure you know well he told me I should get yourself into trouble Paul <laughs> he says you know after a while it's just water off a duck's back you love it he says but, he, but, he, but the big thing he said was, you know, don't be trying to make friends with anybody, you know. Just 
do the comedy, you know, do what you think is funny. Don't be worrying about me or people like that and trying to make friends, you know, that's not the business you're in. You're here to make people laugh. It's the masses, you know. And I said pretty much in, in, in English this to your man. And so I told him, Polter was looking to reach out and we were talking all this mm -hmm. stuff. And then I said to him at the end about the Broly thing. So when I got the article next morning, woke up on the piece was, Connor started doing this, and blah, 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 blah. It's gone on and on. And then at the end of it, then it says, um, Ian Poulter even reached out to him and is looking to do some sort of video with him. But Connor's not in the, uh, but Connor has no interest in making friends with these people. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking me, yeah? Yes. I rang this fellow up. I was like, what is that? I was like, and then he says to me, he says, Oh, it doesn't read like that at all. I think you're over exaggerating. I says, You may pull that. It was a digital piece anyway. I says, Pull that down now. Yeah. I was like, Pull the whole thing off if you're not going to do it. I said, I have to get on to the PR guy and NBC and everything. I was like, Here. I was like, It's amazing how I said two things at either end of the conversation when I uh, saw it and it just came up. I was like, Imagine Paul to read that. You know, the little prick. <laughs> What's Paul to write, man? I, li I like him. I follow him on Instagram. I think he's great. Man, he's a cool dude, he's, man. He's, do you know what? He's a geezer. You know what yeah. I mean? He's, he's a real, like, loves his soccer. He's a proper lad, like, you know, he's just yeah. a lad. And the first time I met him, he was like, mate, love it. Love the stuff, mate. And I was like, just sometimes, am I going too hard on you? Not at all, mate. Keep it going. I love it. Whatever you want, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's opened up plenty of doors, Connor, if you anyway. I can tell you that, man. And then what about, what about Tiger Woods, man? Is he a big dude up close? Is he, he looks strong, strong boy, man. Oh, yeah. You know, he's not even that tall around now, he's, but he's just all there. Massive, like is there a big yeah. aura about him, man? When he walks in and everyone is like, ah, it's Tiger Woods and all. When we were there, he actually had no word of like came on his own. So when I walked in to the the studio, he was right there sitting in a chair in front of me. I was like, it was kind of weird calling him Tiger, you know. I was like, oh well, Tiger. It's like you know, me meeting you for the first time, going Mart, you know that type of way or something. Yeah. yeah. Even though it is his name, you know what I mean. But it was like, oh well, Tiger, how's things? And. uh he was getting me to do the impersonation in front of him and everything. And sure, I brought the cousin and the brother down where I told Bridgestone, I said, um, can I bring me manager and me agent? <laughs> and they were like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, if you need to. I was like, yeah, I don't want to be on my own, you know. So set the voices, come on, we're going to have to meet. First class, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so we went down anyway. And uh, sure, as soon as my brother walked in, sure, the image of each other. Uh, even Ty was like, dude, you're Connor's brother. You have to be. And all the Bridgestone people were there kind of looking at me. I was like, yeah, yeah he's my brother. But he's also my age. <laughs> well, he was, he was, he was, again, he was another fella that was just dead on. And the most surreal thing about meeting Tiger nearly was how normal he is. Like, even mm. meeting McElroy a couple of weeks ago as well, just. So. Yeah, they're all dead on, like, you know what I mean? It's, and the more you're in, I suppose, those circles, the, I suppose that's the, you nearly find it weird how normal everyone is, you know what I mean? You struggle now when you get down to back to Mullingar, man, or back to Crow Park, you'll be struggling. Man, I tell you, I'm looking forward to getting back. Uh, it's you know, and you don't know when you're going to be back with this thing because it's like you know, I'll get a break in the show in a couple of weeks, but I'm like, you probably can't fly home. Like, no, well, you, you, it's 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 getting back into countries. I think they're even saying that in Ireland, if you can fly out, but it's getting back into the fucking place. The problem, man. Yeah, and then getting quarantined maybe in the whole lot. It's not. But, uh, um, what about how are you, are you enjoying all the traveling and stuff? We said pre this virus and stuff like that, man. Getting going around the place and at at, at the start, I was. Um, like you're, you're always buzzing but sure I remember when I started travelling around Ireland doing GA gigs I was loving it so I'd go up there on a th Thursday night or a Friday mm. night to our man I wouldn't want the Sunday kind of thing you were just you'd have a good gig and you'd be there all weekend and nearly celebrating the thing yeah. and you kind of you cut that down after a couple of months then it starts to become a bit of a pain but yeah you know living in hotels sometimes I, like if I was going out doing a gig in San Fran last year two years ago maybe I'd, I'd go for seven days let's or i'd be like i'm gonna go and you know you go for a low like uh, you wouldn't go for the night now i'm kind of like here just fly me in and fly me out like and just yeah get me back home because you kind of you've done it all you know the um any uh, you have to have some good party man that you're at a big what's the best party you've been at since you got involved in in the states the best party i was at since i got involved in the states uh the pga commissioner's house like had a load of like just who's got yeah, we're in the bar. It was like the great Gatsby kind of thing. And uh, the commission, he's actually on the board with Trump opening up uh, America. But I was at that. Jack Nicholas was at it. A couple of weeks ago, I did a gig for Jack. Michael Dell's house was another one. Um, it was there. And you're just talking to all these fellas, like, and it's, it, 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 you kind of sit back and you're like, so this is how the other half live. Do you know, yeah. you're like, whoa, it's a different level. I remember when I was at uh, Dell's house, I thought I was in his house. 
And honestly, it was like, uh, you may as well be standing outside the Liffey Valley Shopping Centre. It's just huge. And I was there, oh, I'm in his house, I'm in his house. And then one of the girls that was organising the shoot, she was like, oh, this isn't his house. This is just the entertainment complex, you know. His house is like about four miles that way. So he owned a complete, like, state, you know what I mean? It's like insane stuff. I suppose and that's the, the nature of golf, I suppose. There's a lot of big-time Charlies in it, you know what I mean? Loads of money in it, man. Loads of money. It's a good, it's a good industry that you're involved in. And tell me this, is, um, are you going to base yourself in Florida or are you going to base yourself in New York? Uh, the Golf Channel are moving to New York next year. Nice. Um, so it could be in New York. It all depends on how things go. Like, you know, the show, we're doing the show at the minute. Like, in, the big thing about the show is, like, keep coming up with stuff and creating stuff. Like, there's no golf, do you know? So well, the, you just don't know what's going to happen with the show. Hopefully it lasts and the golf comes back soon enough for us to get going, kind of, because mm. without golf, it, it is kind of difficult. You're really pulling at straws trying to find content. But yeah. things, you're finding kind of niche content, which is also cool because mm. it's the stuff people aren't really uh, hearing about. But I, I kind of live, like as soon as this is done, I'll go home to Ireland. Will you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the uh, girl from back in Dublin and stuff. And I, you know, I'll definitely go back to Ireland. And then depending on what happens next year, I come back over here and I'll do a, a stint over here. I kind of like going half and half because I'm a bit of a home bird like. Any, any, I suppose, any loneliness, Connor? I can imagine there's bits and pieces and you're stuck in the fucking gaff all the time, you know, man. Uh, now that you mention it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? I haven't even had time. It's been that, I've been that busy because between writing scripts and editing pieces and then actually filming stuff, hmm. I haven't even sat down. And then you're always like, in fairness, this, this sort of crack is unbelievable, this social media stuff. And I have yeah. something to do every day. I have an interview with somebody. I've, like, I did a podcast this morning. I have a podcast tomorrow. I have an interview of shooting Thursday. It's just so busy. I mm. haven't really had time to to really even think you're wrong. And then you just face time back home to the family and the missus and the whole lot. And sure, it's grand. Like, you may yeah. as well be there. Um, and you get out for walks over there. Or what's, what's your area around where you're living there in Orlando? Like, what's I the, do. I have, uh, I, have, uh, I have gloves. The mother sent me gloves, um, masks, and I'm the only person in the area actually walking around with this stuff. And so I have the mask walking around, and I have the gloves on and stuff. And I'm walking around anyway, and people actually avoid you because they think you have it. Yeah. They're actually like stepping to the side, letting you go by. I've been going out for a run, start trying to do. I've been trying to do a 5K wearing the mask. I've only got as far as three and a half and collapse. <laughs> But nominated about four times. I'm ready to do the whole, you know, the whole hand thing. Oh, nominate, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't make it past three and a half K. I keep just, and then I fall to the ground. I'm like, I wouldn't have been much of a long distance runner anyway. Not the five K is a huge distance, but for me, it's a, it's a stretch. Nah, five is good, man. Well, look at you. There won't be too much. Um, the Budamo ball here this summer, man, or, or into the new year, I'd say. We see football at all this year. So you probably, I think the sports in America will kick off by the songs of things. I think that NFL is going to start on time. That's what they're saying today over there. It's well, just, the, oh, the, the Americans have, uh, as I was saying, I was doing an interview mm. in the local paper and around with the show and I was like, I was convinced this show was not going to get done. Mm. I was like, there's no way they're going to do it. But I was the only person over here that thought that. Everybody else, all the, the, the American people I was working with, pure optimism. No, 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 we can do it. Yes, we can. Absolutely. This is going to be the greatest show ever. They just have a different way of looking at things. Yeah. So I do think sports here will kick off because they're very much like, like just get it done. Just and do Ireland, it. We're, we're a bit more cautious and I think, mm. Yeah, I, I can't see any football going on now the next no. uh, the next couple of weeks, the uh, next couple of months. I just think you'd be better off for the sake of everybody, especially amateur players and club football, just saying, mm -hmm. right, we're going to add next year or whatever and maybe start the leagues again. Um, I just can't see it, which is a no. shame as well, like, because you miss it. Even I got the, the boys in GA go, got me and gave me a password and a whole lot. And when I got over here the first week, there I was sitting on my Sunday mornings, whatever, Alliance League, and I was loving it, I was. And then all of a sudden, it's all canned and sure, I haven't turned the TV on in weeks. Stop watching the news as well, because... Nah, it's, it's just negative stuff. Are you managing yourself, man, over there with cooking and stuff? You, have you always been able to cook, man, or, you, or what's the deal? I thought a man like you now would have a butter at this stage. <laughs> I did, but sure, you can't come into the house with the social distance. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, do you know what? I, I, I'm like, well, you know, cooking the usual stuff. I'll have uh, a bit of chicken one day, steak the next day. There's yeah. nothing too complicated. It's all fairly basic stuff onto the pan and fry it up and ate it. Like, but the only thing is, 
she, you're saving so much money as well. Like I was thinking about, I was, I was giving out when I came over. I was like the price of uh, everything, the price of food. <laughs> I went into the, went into the shopping market there one day, and I walked up to buy a drink. And you know the way you're 21 here. Yeah. I walk up to buy the drink anyway. And your man takes the card off me, and he heard me, uh, me ID, and he's looking at it. And you know over here, the, the date and the month are backwards. Right. You know, or for us, it's backwards. So they yeah. start off the month and the day. So it was 1910. To him, it should be 1019. So he's looking at this, looking at this. <laughs> he was there. And I looked at him and says, um, oh, that's backwards, that is. That's the 19th of the 10th, 19th of October. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what year your October is. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there for about 10 seconds. And I was looking at the other <laughs> cash register fella. And I was like, I was like, it's, it, it's, it's, it's 1988. It's a year. That's October's a month. And he said, oh, dude, man, you know, what? Wow, it's been a long day. I was like, oh, it happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, Scott, have you, have you enjoyed the RT stuff, Connor, when you're doing it over here on of the Sunday game skits with the boys? Yeah, I love it. You know what I mean? I actually, mm. um, I, I miss doing the GA stuff. The biggest buzz I get out of doing anything is probably GA stuff, just because um, the people closest to you get the greatest laugh off that. Yeah. And people I know back home and whatever down the club, they all love the, you know, the Sherlock Nan and stuff like that, you know, and I'm, I'm, I miss doing Jer. I was just saying, it, a lot of people copped on to, uh, even though I didn't do this on purpose, but I did an interview with Sky last week and I did Gary Player. And Gary's becoming like a really good uh, impression for me. He's becoming really popular. Mm. And Gary kind of does have this thing. Now, he's not as bad as Jer with the neck. But he's like, I'll tell you now. And obviously, like, is, you know, absolute. That's right. You know? So I started doing this with Gary Player. Didn't even know. And I'd done him on Sky Sports. Massive reaction in the UK to him and in Ireland. All the boys were like, genius. Genius, Morris. How did you think of that? You know, mm. yeah, making Jerlock Nan Gary Player. I was like, I didn't actually think of that. And then I was looking at it going, oh, sure, this is perfect. Like, because Gary is the exact same as Jer. He's from a different era. He's looking mm. down at these young fellas doing all this, and he's like, ah, geez, these fellas, you know. And he, he know, like, he's, he's really strong opinion. So I was like, I think I might have, uh, as I was saying, like, if I had Sherlock Man over here, I'd be set for life. So maybe Gary Player might be my, uh, my, my Sherlock Man. There you go. Is there any, anyone you struggle with, Connor? Any, any gimmick guy you struggle with? Or yeah, do, you, do you practice that stuff, man? Then, then... Oh, oh, man. Un like an unbelievable amount. At the minute, I'm practicing... Uh, could take me ages to get someone, then it might take me not to get someone. Like, I remember doing Harrington. Harrington's really easy. You know, ah, you know, it's great. You know, eh, it's far like that. So, like, Harrington was fairly simple. Yeah. But then, like, you do someone. Like, Tiger took me a while. At the minute, I'm mm. trying to get um, some soccer lads. Mm. Um, the and the Klopp no? I do have Klopp, yeah. Oh, for sure. There's more to be happy to play better. <laughs> That's pretty much what got me the job in Joe, doing Klopp. Uh, <coughs> so, I, yeah. Like and that's what that that's the thing that keeps James me. Horn, have you got him? Yeah, look at uh, look at uh, Mort. Um, yeah, any chance to come in with the team there, Mort? Uh, you know, bring it back. Yeah, you're only about fifty-two. <laughs> look at, look at. Someone you know, said Harry Kane. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, obviously, it's a my name is a regular Sam. It's a Sam, believe me. Uh, my outfit, is Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's deadly, man. Have you met him? Actually, that's a good one there, Dusty Johnson, man, and his queen, man. Have you seen them along the way anywhere? No, I haven't. And out of all the ones I do, I'd say he'd slap the head off me if he seen mm. me. Just He's supposed to be a lunatic, man, I think. I, I, take, I do take the piss out of DJ. But the only thing is, DJ's been asked about it a few times. He's like, yeah, man, it's funny, man. You know? Um, mm -hmm. And I'm kind of thinking, he's going he's gonna to do me one day. But uh, I, I was doing a gig in Pebble Beach a couple of weeks ago, and I was sitting mm. there in a room, and I was doing DJ. I swear, this God's honest truth. I was doing them. I was standing here and I was like, um, yeah, man, you know, and I was doing all this. And everybody started hysterically laughing, even though I was halfway through them. I was going, what, what's, why is everyone after, like, laughing for no reason? And then everyone was looking out the window. I wasn't DJ at the window talking to someone, just outside, <laughs> right? Because he was playing in the Pebble Beach pro -Am. And, like, Jordan Speed and all the boys were inside the room or whatever, and there was a lot of players. And then I was like, oh, my God. I actually just stopped doing them then because I was actually scared. <laughs> if he came in, he would literally be like, I say. <laughs> Is there any headers in that tour, um, Connor? Matt, would you say lunatics in that golf tournament? Uh, not, that, you know, not that I know of. You know, when you're kind of outside, you hear all these wacky stories. Now when you're inside it, like, the, not that I'm inside it, but you're in the golf channel and stuff, you don't really hear of, mm. of anything. Like, do, do you know what? To be... At, it's like when I, I remember going out to Augusta last year and I was in chatting to Lowry. The first time I met Shane, 
and he was talking about how much he trains and everything else. And like, <laughs> I, I had this, I had this kind of impression of all golfers, like you know, outside Tiger Woods, that Tiger's the only guy that trains every day and does all this mad stuff. But they all do it, like you know, from Shane to McIlroy, mm. like they're all in some way obsessed. And I think to get to that level, mm. you know, where you're on a worldwide sport, like, and you look at like them lads, they're in the top fifty of the world. You have to be obsessed and like have an incredible worker. And I'd say like if you're messing around, like. You wouldn't last too long. It's no more than doing soccer or anything like that now. Or mm. even look at GA players. You don't hear of any mad GA players anymore. Like I'll be with today's, but you know when the Frankie Dolans and the boys were around, <laughs> and they were naked in front of the sun of the world and all that. You know, <laughs> you know Woolly Parkinson. And these boys he's actually on here looking, man. So he's, he's on the feed here looking as well. Frankie, Frankie. is. Yeah, he's what a there, hero! <laughs> <laughs> what a hero! I, you know, he's the real Dolan. <laughs> yeah. Um, What's, I know you have, a, you have an interview there, Half Seven, kind of with the Golf Channel as well. What's, what's, the, what's next for you, I suppose, really? What's the future hold? Have you had any big, apart from your own show, is that what you're focused on for the next while, or what's the crack? Uh, yeah, do you know what? Just this. Um, and obviously, mm. I'm using this time, like anybody that's doing anything, I'm using this time to improve on some other stuff and to get some impressions down. So I'm working on like Phil Mickelson and Jack Nicholas and stuff. But, like, people always ask me about the future and stuff. I always kind of have the same answer for it. Like, I kind of just worry about today. Yeah. Um, just so, like, because I think if you do that, like, you won't go too far wrong. You keep looking ahead of yourself. Mm. If you get lost doing that, and if you get look behind, you're definitely going to get lost. So my focus nearly is just week on week putting out a good show. And hopefully you're good you're show. busy anyway, obviously. You're booked up for the next while, I see him anyway. Oh, yeah. And you know what? These things keep me going as well. I've never, ever done as much um, PR stuff. And, mm. you know, and you're trying, to do as much, you're trying to do as much as you can. You can't do it all, like, you know, but um, it's also good to keep doing it. Like, it keeps you, like, it keeps you skilling up on your own. Uh, doing Connor Moore is the hardest impression I have to do, you know? Have you any jobs back here, actually, in the, in, in the new year? That's what I meant to ask you about. Um, sure. I, I like I did. I had a load of, like I had a load of gigs. Like even like around the All Ireland time, I always leave that free because I like to go home for All Ireland and I'll do um, a couple of GA gigs. Um, Get a ticket handy, will you? Uh, <laughs> Frankie, New York next year, lads. Yes. Uh, whenever we, we we go over a couple of times, we used to go over twice a year. My me and Frankie actually only finished up probably two years ago there due to obviously something not sports going on or whatever. So the next time we're over there, man, we'll we'll, we'll get you down there. A couple of our mates there, a couple of bars out there, and. I just opened up a bar. I opened up, uh, or well, I was we just opened up a bar. Didn't open it up actually. Um, it was supposed to open up Paddy's Day. It's called the Westbury on um, 38th and 5th. The boys went in with the boys from the Long Hall. If you know the Long, the long uh, Hall, he, he he drops in and out of my stories there a good bit, Johnny. Actually. Johnny, yeah, legend. But yeah. anyway, the boys said to me, they were like, we're getting involved in this bar. We're buying the Australian up the road, and uh, they said, do you want to get in on it? And I was him and Han about it and all, and I was like, yeah, go on. So I went in anyway, and. We're mad excited for it. We had it all dolled up. The place was all looked well, up. actually. Looked well. Find the drink, the whole lot, and then couldn't uh, couldn't open it. Come on, Tom, shoot! There's my cousin coming in. Handy, handy footballer, amazing singer. Tom, shoot! <laughs> but um, get the yeah. bar going, sure. When it when it quite job, you, you're going to stay out. Yeah, like there's you know we we see we didn't open it yet, you know. So we mm. like um. We didn't have to lay off staff. We had a couple of lads lined up, like a couple of good lads as well. But, um, mm. you know, we just hopefully open it up when it's right. Like, at the end of the day, you have to obviously be socially responsible. Like, you know, we actually closed it up a little bit before New York went into lockdown because we were kind of saying, like, I was like, I can't go on my social media and say, I'm opening up a bar. Come have a look at this bar. Yeah. Well, it's not so, really the responsible mm. thing to do, like, you know. And I think I don't really see it. For, it won't open up for a while anyway until you need a vaccine or something goes on. Or... He's a good skin, that Johnny Connor. He's, uh, I see him, he's doing a podcast. He did one with McCaffrey there. Did he only a yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a great <laughs> podcast going. It's meant the Long Haul yeah. podcast. So, see, the great thing about the Long Haul was there were so many Irish people yeah. um, coming in to the Long Haul all the time. So he grabbed them, bring them upstairs, and they have a little podcast corner set up. Like So he gets a good out chat out of them, you know? And the yeah. Long, Long Haul is kind of... Uh, it's like the hub of New York, nearly, you know, for Irish <laughs> people. That's what I loved about it then, because I was living beside it last year, and sure you'd be uh, Andy. Guinness, Guinness, Guinness. Guinness. <laughs> I think Dennis Croon's talking to Ed and Tierney here, is he? He's telling them to do Andy Dufresne. <laughs> Not Ed. But, um, uh, yeah, so get the bar open whenever. Like, there's no panic in the bar anyway. Um, no. Whenever it opens up, it opens up, and sure we'll, uh, we'll get you'll, a few. You'll, you'll do well, man, whatever you're doing now. 
I'm going to let you go then, man. I know you have another interview there at half seven. So, look, at Connor, good to talk to you on a personal level, 100%, man. And much appreciated for coming on. Of course, cheers. I could have done it for another hour with you. We'll talk to you again soon, man, 100%, Got bro. You. Good luck. Take care Thanks. of yourself, man. Thanks, all. Bye bye. Bye bye. guys, Connor Sketches, top man, great chat. Um, so, I've got Cora Staunton tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Um, so, we've got a, a chat with her tomorrow night as well. All right, guys, take care of yourself.